I'm Derek, and welcome back to Bad Movie Friday Night. Well, it's March, and I've dubbed it the March of the Living Dead, where each week we celebrate a movie in my favorite horror subgenre, zombies. Zombies have been in and out of cinema since the 1930s, the earliest film probably being the Bela Lugosi classic White Zombie. However, zombies didn't truly become a mainstay of the horror genre until the 1968 George Romero iconoclastic film Night of the Living Dead, which reimagined zombies as not only reanimated corpses, but flesh-eating ghouls with only the instinct to feed. Soon, the genre became popular with independent filmmakers and major motion picture firms alike, and the 70s and 80s saw on influx of zombie movies from all over the world. However, in the 1990s, the genre became unfashionable, with fewer films coming out until the turn of the new millennium, when the genre exploded into the mainstream, leading not only to films, but TV shows, music, comic books, video games, and even a government guide to surviving the zombie apocalypse. Now, I consider myself a bit of a purist. I believe that the heyday for zombie films was between 1968 and 1994, as I've mentioned on another show, when it was a very cult genre. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't any good modern zombie films, I just think that the market is so oversaturated that most of them are pretty dull. I mean, there's actually a movie out there called Warm Bodies, which is, if you look at it, a retelling of Romeo and Juliet, with Juliet being a freaking human and Romeo being a zombie. Now, I think I'm not alone in saying this, but if a genre goes to Romeo and Juliet, you've probably gone a bit too far. Well, now that I've started to bash zombie movies from the present day, let's look at a modern day zombie movie. This movie came out in 2006, and it's called Hide and Creep, and it's probably my favorite modern zombie film. And to go along with it, since it's set in Alabama, I've decided to make Alabama-style pulled chicken barbecue sandwiches. Right now, I've got two chicken breasts that I've butterflied, and I'm going to add a marinade of apple cider vinegar, some olive oil, and my Cajun curry spice mix. We're just going to get that completely coated and then let it rest in the fridge for about an hour. So let's get started. We start with our credit sequence with cut scenes of one of our leads, Carl, talking over the phone about zombie movies. Evil Dead's not a zombie movie. No, it's not. It's Kandarian demons that possess the living. I mean, I hate to tell you, but there are only like three good American zombie movies, and Romero made all those. And this is where I start to fall in love with this movie. I've had this very same conversation with several friends of mine, talking about zombie films and which movies actually qualify as zombie films. The characters in this film are very relatable. Anyways, jump cut to a man stuck in a tree with no pants. Then we go to a gun club out in the middle of the woods where they're having a problem with their satellite because the generator has gone out. The group sends out someone to fix it and that ends just about as well as you'd think in a zombie film. <laughs> Not five minutes in, and we already have likable characters and a death. How could such a low-budget movie get it right when so many blockbusters get it wrong? Oh well, let's cook our chicken. We're just using the inside grill pan right now. You can do this outside on a proper barbecue. I'm just out of gas right now. We're just going to cook them until they're fully cooked. Now we come back to Chuck who's asleep on the floor of his video store. He wakes up to help a customer and afterwards gets attacked by a zombie. He fends it off and thinks he kills it, and he calls the cops to come. The secretary, Barbara, says unless he's in a life or death situation, don't call until Monday. So he calls his mom. Hey, mom. What's up? Listen, um, weird question, but would you have any idea how to get blood stains out of a t-shirt? Shampoo? Or try cornstarch and water, but hydrogen peroxide works best. Okay, mom, if hydrogen peroxide works best, then just say hydrogen peroxide because I don't need a whole history on stain removal. Oh my God, 
I've had the exact same conversation. So, he drops the dead guy off at the police station and goes gets breakfast. See, Pepsi, this so-called choice of a new generation, is nothing but a charlatan, a fraud, an imposter. Seriously, this guy could be a cousin of mine. Well, while that's going on, Barbara at the station calls in her ex-boyfriend, a former police deputy, to come in and do some policing. A preacher gets bit, and a random government agent parachutes into town and takes Barbara's car. Yep, random, but awesome. So what I'm doing now is I'm pulling those chicken breasts. I cut them into slices and now I'm just pulling some of the muscle fiber apart so that we get nice thin strips of chicken. And this is going to become the basis of our chicken sandwiches. Okay, so the gun club members decide to militia up and patrol the town to keep it safe. Along the way, there's some funny little vignettes of the town folk either trying to survive or getting eaten. The government agent meets up with the guy from the beginning of the movie in the cemetery, and also meets up with Carl and Bobby, the ex-cop slash ex-boyfriend. So they all go back to the police station where the government agent gets bit, and since Chuck's truck is now out of commission, they decide to go to the cemetery to get Barbara's car. There's a lot more to this movie that I'm just glossing over, but that's because I really want you to see this movie, and I don't want to ruin all the good bits. So Chuck stays at the police station in case anyone calls, and rifles through the evidence box and finds some good old devil's lettuce, and proceeds to get comfortable while waiting on the car. So while he waits, let's make our barbecue sauce. Now this is what makes it absolutely Alabaman, as it's a mayonnaise-based barbecue sauce. I know what you're thinking, that's pretty weird. But the way I see it is that some people put coleslaw on their barbecue, so it's basically the same concept. Now in this bowl, I've got some mayonnaise, and to that I'm going to add some apple cider vinegar, some horseradish, some salt, and some pepper. And then we're just going to mix all that up and set it to the side until we're ready to use it. Okay, so there's some silliness going on and the surviving gun club member finds out the zombies are afraid of the dark. He phones the information to the local radio station and the preacher holds a service which ends with him killing himself before the infection makes him go full on Romero. Bobby and Barbara reach the car, but it breaks down after Barbara hits some zombies. So they run to Barbara's brother's house looking for help. So now we're just going to take that chicken we pulled and we're going to mix it with some of our barbecue sauce. You want just enough to keep it moist, but not too wet. So it turns out Barbara's brother is the surviving gun club member, and they try to escape only to learn that one of Barbara's brother's daughters has been bitten and has turned into a zombie. Chuck has decided to make a run for it until he hears some news on the television. We will be rebroadcasting the game from earlier tonight since we had to preempt it for breaking news. And if there's one thing that we've learned about the Iron Ball in the past, is that if anything can happen when one of these two teams hit the field. And since both teams are coming off some spectacularly bad losses in the past two games, well, this game is going to be a much needed boost for one of those teams, especially with Alabama's quarterback Jeff Jeffries. I've got some time. And that's the end of the film. And now our sandwiches are done. We're just going to put the meat on a bun and serve with fries. So. Final thoughts on the film. I love this movie. The characters are very relatable. The pacing is great, and the story is camp and entertaining. It is low budget as all get out, but that's what adds to the charm of it. It literally feels like an entire town got together and decided to make a movie, and the fun the actors are having just pours from the screen. Now, the audio is kind of terrible, but you can overlook that because you're having a lot of fun watching it. I highly recommend this for a viewing party. Just laugh and have a good time. So gather up your friends, Make yourself some Alabama barbecue and have a good time. Well, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in. And come back next week as the March of the Dead continues with an international zombie film.